All right, hey gang, Mr. Spencer here. What I wanna to do today is go a little bit deeper into what we've been talking about with chemical compounds, and specifically whether these compounds are called ionic or, or covalent. But we need to review a few things first. Now, I want you to think back to when we were talking about the periodic table, and when we were going over how we know whether things are metals or, or non-metals on the, on the periodic table. Now, if you take a look at, at this, um, you can see that based off of how this periodic table is set up, if it's a metal, it's it's this bluish color. And you can see that most of the periodic table is, is made up of, of metals. But also we have a certain amount of elements that are these non-metals. Okay, so there's those are these ones in gold along with, with hydrogen. Now it's going to be really important that when you do this, you're able to take a periodic table and identify the elements and see whether they're metals or, or non-metals. Now along with that, I want you to think back to when we talked about the difference between elements and, and compounds. And what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on this idea of elements. The, that's matter that's made up of one kind of atom. So if we have a chunk of gold, that's an element because it's made up of, of purely gold atoms. All right? But when we talk about a compound, compound is this kind of, of matter that's made up of, of two or more of these elements that are, are, are bonded together. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. Specifically, those atoms that are in a compound, they're, they're bonded or stuck together because of how the electrons, uh, specifically the electrons that are on the outside, interact with each other. Um, so if we take a look at this and we take this idea of, of a compound, okay, we've got two different kinds of compounds. The first one is this idea of, of an ionic compound, and the second one is this idea of a covalent compound. Now I'm going to be honest with you, here in Intro to Chem, um, we're simplifying this. We're, we're making it pretty easy, and um, what we're going to do is, is talk about if it's an ionic compound, we're going to say that those electron or that the electrons have been stolen, but if it's a covalent compound, electrons are being shared. Now, when we look at this idea of ionic compounds versus covalent compounds, it's going to be important to understand that for what we're talking about in this class, ionic compounds tend to be a combination of, of metals and and nonmetals. So if we have a, a compound and we take a look at it and we see that it has both metals in it and nonmetals, in this class we're going to say that that's an ionic compound. Whereas if we look at a, at a covalent compound, these tend to be just nonmetals. Like I said, I'm simplifying this for, for us, uh, but if it has a combination of metals and nonmetals, we've got an ionic compound. If it's just nonmetals, then we're talking about a covalent compound. So let's look at some, some examples. So if I go here and I take NaCl, so sodium chloride, and I look up sodium on the periodic table, I'm gonna see that that is a, that's a metal, all right? And chlorine, chlorine is a nonmetal. So since the I have a combination of metal and nonmetals, sodium chloride, we're gonna call that an ionic compound. Let's take a look at this other one, sodium hydroxide. Once again, we talked about sodium, how that's a metal. But if I find oxygen on the periodic table, I'm gonna see that it's also one of those nonmetals. Same thing with, with hydrogen, also a nonmetal. So because, once again, we have these metals and nonmetals, we've got ourselves an ionic compound. And one last uh, example, calcium carbonate. All right, so we take calcium, that's a metal. Carbon, that's a non-metal. And oxygen, that's another non-metal. So same pattern as before. Combination of metals and non-metals gives us an ionic compound. But if I take a look over here at our covalent compounds, let's take ammonia, okay? Ammonia is NH3, so it's a nitrogen and three hydrogens. So if I find nitrogen, that's gonna be a nonmetal. And hydrogen, like we've already talked about, that's gonna be another nonmetal. 
So since I have just non-metals here, we're going to call that covalent. Now, if we take a look at glucose, C6H12O6, carbon, that's a non-metal. Hydrogen, that's a non-metal. And oxygen, that's a non-metal. All right. Once again, just non-metals that are combined together or bonded together to form a, a compound, we're going to call that a covalent compound. And the last one, the last one's a little tricky, but not really. Okay. If I look at this, any of these diatomic ion, or atoms or elements, oh, wow, diatomic particles or molecules, okay, like fluorine. Okay, when fluorine bonds, or when fluorine is is out in nature, it bonds to another fluorine. So really, what we've got here is a fluorine atom that's bonded to another fluorine atom, all right? And usually what happens is people look at this and they're like, well, it's fluorine and it's just, well, that's a non-metal, but there's just fluorine. But think about it this way. I've got two fluorine atoms here. Each of those is a non-metal. So what we've got there are a pair of non-metals combined together to form a covalent compound. All right, so I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. And what I want to see you do is take a look at these right here, pause the video when I'm done talking, and go ahead and try these on your own. See if you can figure out whether these are ionic compounds or covalent compounds. Talk to you soon.